Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 264. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 161 to 164. Hey, in trick 264, we want to see how to record a macro to change this data set. Now, the tr the one of the keys to this is we want to use this macro again when we get this similar data set every month or every week. So when we record our macro, we'll record it in the personal workbook. And we may have additional rows. So right now we maybe have just this many, but next time we'll have a bunch more. The trick we're to um, different number of rows for us using a recorded macro is that we're going to have to switch between the relative and the absolute macro. There's a great trick for those of us that are not very good at writing VBA code by hand that will allow us to have variable uh, number of rows. But again, it comes down to relative and absolute macro. Now, how do we want to change this data set? Here we have this column, this column, and this column. And we need to add a new column, concatenate, which means we don't want to have three. We want to combine all three of these into one inserted column, and then delete those three. So that's, what we're, that's how we want the macro to change this data set. But remember, there's two other things. We want to be able to use it again, so we'll save it in our personal workbook. And uh, we're going to have to use the relative and absolute macro to deal with the fact that there's uh, not the same amount of rows every time. Now, a couple things. If you are in 2007, you better use the extension .xls or .xlsm, because the extension .xlsx will not allow macros. Uh, the second point is you have to add the developer ribbon. If you're in 2007, you go up to this Office button right here, Excel Options, and then sure enough, right here under Popular, there's Show Developer tab. Uh, the other thing is, since we're going to record this macro in our personal uh, workbook, uh, that will allow us to use the macro in any workbook we have open on this computer. But what is a personal workbook? Well, in 2007, if you go to View, um, and then I have to ex extend the size here because view there it is right there unhide and hide by the way I always have my uh, screen really t small here because uh, I'm trying to t fit into the uh, the screen that's recording but view there it is these are the uh, unhide and hide but let's click unhide no way. This is a personal workbook that's always hidden. This is where you restored our macros. And guess what? Every time you open Excel, up Excel, it's there. If you want to edit the macro you store here, you'd actually have to come and unhide and then edit it. All right, let's see if I can uh, size this back. Now, if you're in 2003 to hide and unhide your personal workbook, you got to go to the Windows menu. One other thing before we start, I have a bunch of extra sheets here with this same data set because usually when you're learning how to do macros and going back and forth between relative and absolute for the first time, you make some mistakes. So, and you can copy the sheet over a bunch of times and, and try this. Not only that, but once we record ours, we'll then go try it and see if it works. All right, so we're ready to start. Uh, in 2007, to start a macro, you go to Developer, and it's right there. In 2003, you go to Tools, Macro, Record Macro. In 2007, you can also click on this button right here. Now, let's call this um, Change Data. And this is going to always, the data is always going to be dumped into the same place, usually A1, but for us it's D12. So change data set starting in D12. And I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to say Control Shift uh, F, Control Shift G, how about that? And then I'm going to uh, 
put a good description here so when I come back later I know what it does. So you can see I can type really fast. Data set starts in D12 and can have variable rows. The go goal of this macro is to insert a new column H then concatenate columns E, F, and G starting, these will be absolute always in the same place, E12, F12, G12, and then copy, paste special values, and finally delete columns E, F, and G. All right, so when I click OK, it'll start recording. Now, I'm going to uh, look up here. Uh, there is a relative uh, button right there relative absolute button. If it's got an orange box around it, it means that it's on. R does not have an orange box, so it means it's off. It's recording absolute. In 2003, the um, stop recording macro toolbar pops up when you start recording. If it's not there, then you need to stop recording and go uh, sh show it by right clicking some toolbar um, and going to uh, stop record macro toolbar and then you'll see that button All right so it's fine right now because it's absolute so I'm gonna click in actually I'm gonna click escape just that to not show that ribbon and I want to insert a uh, column so I'm gonna click on H right click insert this is all absolute so it's always gonna go to H now I wanna absolutely click in H12 and I wanna concatenate equals three cells to my left ampersand and I'm going to, in quotes, put a dash and then ampersand. So, and then I want to join this one. Ampersand, a double quote, dash, double quote, ampersand. And then I'm going to get this one. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to control enter. And now I'm going to double click this column H to um, best fit it. That cell is still selected. It's all absolute. I'm going to copy. But now the trick is I need to paste it somehow down this whole range. But there could be more rows or fewer. So watch this. This is the trick. Uh, we're still in absolute. I'm going to click in G12. And the fact that we can use the keyboard shortcut control down arrow, which means go to the bottom of the current range, I'm going to do it control down arrow. That in absolute mode is uh, will always jump down to the last um, thing in this column as long as there's no blanks, no matter how big it is. So that's the whole trick. Um, we use that trick during absolute. But now, wherever we are, wherever we ended up, even if it's 50 rows down, we want to go relative over one. So now we need to turn on this uh, relative recorder. And now when I click in the cell in the code, which we'll go look at, it didn't say click in cell H22. It said go one to my right. Now I'm going to turn the absolute uh, reference, uh, relative reference off. And now I can use a keyboard shortcut, control shift up arrow, which means go to the top of the current range or, or to the, the through all the banks, blanks into the next uh, uh, element that has something in the cell. So control shift up arrow. Now notice I originally copied this so now I just have to control V. Now I'm going to point to this uh, smart tag here and say uh, match destination formatting. I'm going to click escape to turn off those uh, dancing ants and then with it still highlighted I need to copy and paste special values because I don't want these formulas because when I delete these it'll uh, give me an error so copy and then however you uh, paste special values there's lots of ways to do it right click paste specials values click OK click escape to get rid of the dancing ants and then I'm going to highlight E, F, and G. This is all absolute. Right click, delete. And then I'm going to click in cell D12. Because remember, this data set always starts in D12. If you're in A1, that's fine. And that's it. That macro should do the trick. We'll come down here to stop. If you're in 2003, this stop uh, macro should be on your little floating toolbar. We stopped it. Now let's go try it. Now remember, it is. Um, it starts as a absolute macro so wherever my cursor is the first thing we recorded was please click in that cell right there so I'm gonna click right there and see if it works control shift G and there it worked just like that magic oh but wait a second we didn't try it with uh, uh, 
different number of rows. So let's go down to this next one. And I'm going to add a bunch of extra rows. Right? And now I'm going to try it. Now I'm going to try it. Control Shift G. Zoop. And sure enough, it did it. Now let's try it. I'm going to use in the you know I always post two workbooks, uh, a starting one and an end one that shows you all the things I've done. I'm going to actually delete a bunch of rows. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt E A A, Alt E A A, which is clear all. And now I'm going to try it. Control Shift G. And sure enough, it works no matter how many rows there are. So uh, the most important thing in this video, besides the cool concatenating and all that, is knowing how to uh, use a relative and absolute references in a macro to deal with variable rows in a data set. All right, we'll see you next trick.